Hey, welcome, welcome back to Four of Beauty. Where will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. However, what I do know is that I did this look a while ago. Um, and it appeared in one of my films and I had a lot of requests. I'm about to sneeze, excuse me. Do you know what? I might leave those in just for the comedy value. My husband and I have the weirdest sneezes. His sometimes end up as Scooby Doo. Don't ask. Anyway, I had a lot of requests to do a tutorial on this particular look. So, your wish is my command, kinda. And using my Oh My Glitter Winter Wonderland palette. I recreated the look for you. So, if you want to find out A, what this palette looks like inside, because I don't think I've actually shown you that yet. B, how many shadows I used. Have a guess, see if you can guess how many colours I used to create this. And, most importantly, how well this palette performs. Then, my friend. You are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey! Welcome back from the intro. Right. Everything falls all over the place. I thought for not getting it ready before I pressed the record button. But if you know me, you know what I'm like for. Um, I did a makeup look the other day. I can't remember which film it was for. It was probably not very helpful. Might have been my better together with Nona. Anyway, um, I got asked to recreate that look because people liked it so much. It was a really, really simple sort of teal look, which I used my I'm my glitter winter wonderland palette for. And I pretty much just used two shades. I used dreaming here and frozen here so it's a really nice simple easy look to create because it's literally two shadows now this is still a teaching channel so obviously I'm going to go at a speed that beginners can keep up with me that combined with my chronic pain equals not fast there's a speed widget up there. Feel free to use it if I'm going too slowly for you. Um, I do have a code for Oh My Glitter. It's BOMBER, all in caps, like all my other ones are. And I believe you save 10% on orders over £10. And I that is an affiliated code. I actually earn a little bit of comeback from that. But you don't pay anything more for the fact that you just save money. Um, and also I've got my obviously my Chrome Pebble code for the eye primer which it's not affiliated because I don't earn money from it but I earn pebbles that I can then offset against future purchases from the store. Right, I'm going to talk you through the difference between deep set and hooded eyes because a lot of people think they've got hooded eyes when they've actually got deep set. So I'm going to insert that footage now. Warning, I'm going to be very up close. 
please don't scream. Uh, and then once previous me has explained in current film about eye shapes, I will be back to show you exactly how I achieved this particular look. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome and Pebble primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's... It goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows, and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hello, I'm back. Right, this is one of my do colour 
Will you focus on it or will you not? One of my Do Colour brushes. It's basically a tapered blending brush. So it's still got flexibility to the brush, but it's quite a tapered top because I want to be able to control exactly how far I blend this mat out to. Um, let's get started. I'm going to start off in obviously the single mat that I'm using, which is Dreaming. So pick up some powder, tap off any excess. The brush is clean, it's just stained from the last time I used this colour. And then I'm going to start just slightly above my natural crease initially. Again, holding the brush right at the end to prevent um, me hitting or putting too much pressure on. And yes, at the moment I'm still a nail down, which I broke when I nearly passed out and had to grab at the car to stop myself from hitting the floor. Now because this is such a deep shadow, I tapped off quite a bit, which is why you're probably thinking, oh, that hasn't got much pigment to it. It has, I just tapped off a lot. It's really annoying going back to my nails, because look, my nails are actually the actual length of the acrylic. Just with acrylic on the top. So now I'm going to have to have a tip until this one grows back out again. Right, as always I'm doing my little circular movements. But if you've noticed, I go in this direction towards the nose. Bounce in the middle. And then reverse the direction when I come back out. Now the reason I do that is because I'm 45, I'll be 46 in May, and I've lost 14 stone, which is 200 pounds, thereabouts. So the skin on my eyelids moves. But I know 20 year olds who've always been skinny little things that have problems with less taut eyelids and by doing this circular movement what you're doing is you're very gently moving the skin around to prevent any barcoding now this eye you can see I've got super deep creasing just here I do have to stretch this eye out because unfortunately the barcoding doesn't work for me but I'll show you that when I get there. So you can see I've done, I've effectively put one stripe across and I'm slowly building the depth of colour up. So although I do my base afterwards, I'd still rather not have masses amounts of fallout to deal with. And then I'm slowly bringing it down more towards where my natural crease is. I mean, what you can do if you want is kind of windscreen wiper through where your natural crease falls. So you have an indication of how far down you want to take it. But if you're like me, by the time you've been doing your eyes long enough, you know roughly where you're going to go to anyway. So I'm keeping this inner part quite straight, but then really, very gently blurring the outer edges to soften them. You can see I've got some fallout here, but Again, I do my foundation afterwards, so it's not an issue. Pick up 
a little bit more and you basically just keep building this colour up until you get it to the colour of the shade that you're happy with and make sure that your edges are nicely blurred now if you struggle with getting a nice blurred edge just with using one deeper shade there are a couple of lighter skin tone shades, cool toned and warm toned, that you could use along that edge to help buff them out. Or you could use translucent powder, or you could just use a clean brush without anything on it. But I would encourage you to practice if you can, if you've got the time. Just practice blowing out a single shade like this because it will really, really help in terms of your blending ability, especially when you then blend more than one colour together. If you've got this experience of really buffing out and blending out the edge of a single colour, and a deeper colour at that, you will find it so much easier to uh, to blend in the future. And you can see again, I've started off with as pigment on my brush as I can get away with and I'm just going to slowly build that up. It's much better, especially if you're still learning, which is why I tend to do mine like this. It's much better to start off with lighter layers of colour and build them up than it is to go whoomp with the pigment and try and blend it out. Um, that's why a lot of people complained that the Revolution Emily Noel palette, you had to really build the pigments up, but that's what she wanted with her palette. If you watched her reveal video, she wanted it that way, so that beginners weren't frightened of pigment and didn't suddenly have a huge clump of pigment on their lid that they then needed to burn, blend out. So it was actually her choice to have it slightly less pigmented but buildable rather than instant colour. I just keep stopping and double checking A that the shapes that I've done are the same and B that I've got the same depth of colour both sides because I don't photoshop anything I don't filter anything well, apart from obvious snapchat filters where I've got like butterflies around my head or something um, but if I put up pictures with snapchat filters on you can be sure that the first couple of photos will be ones that are not filtered. The closest you'll find me do is if when I take the photos it's got very cloudy outside I might brighten them up a little bit just so you can actually see the correct colour but I don't adjust the warmth, I don't adjust the saturation, I don't do any skin smoothing, I don't sort of if there's something looking a little bit patchy, just like that, but there is. I don't then go in and touch it up afterwards. If I don't spot it and fix it while I'm doing the eye look, then it just stays there in the photos, unfortunately. Because I'm not a certain petulant young man who photoshops everything. And if someone says something even slightly disagreeable about him, 
throws his toys out of the pram and gets his friend Susan to come down on them like a ton of bricks. Can we guess who I'm talking about? A little bit of side eye there. Right. I'm going to grab a little bit of this dreaming, this same shade, and just pack it on just to the outside edge of my mobile lid because I don't want the shimmer pigment to go right out to the edge. I want to keep a little bit of matte colour just on the outer edge there. This is what I was meaning by barcoding. And unfortunately because this is the eye that was pulled around by the ophthalmic hospital when I was five years old trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly with it. So I do have to do this with this particular one. Do not pull your lid out if you don't have to. If you are like me where you've got that particular creasing and the circular movement doesn't work for you. Only stretch it out as far as you have to and let go as soon as you are done. Right, I've just used a micropore cloth to clean the brush off with. And I'm going to grab this is actually a, a Morphe M321. It's like a pencil brush, but it's just a little bit more flexible. And once I've put the pigment onto the brush, I'll be wetting it with my Jasmine Slay all day. Um, I do have a code for Gerard that is affiliated. All my codes are listed in the description box. Um, I'm going to dip into Frozen. And I'm going to build the pigment up on the brush and then I'm going to wet the brush. Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. Um, normally I would use a cheaper spray than my Gerard to wet the pigment. But for some reason the Jasmine one dries my jawline out. None of the other scents do it. But the Jasmine one, just something in the scent of the Jasmine just affects my jawline. So I'm just going to apply this shimmer to the mobile lid, or the two thirds of it that so far haven't received much attention. Yes, I'm getting fallout. No, I really don't mind. Uh, blend that across the lid and lightly buff where it meets the matte shade on the outside. I'm just going to dry the brush off before I go in and pick up some more of that pigment. So you can see although Frozen is more blue than the teal Dreaming, which is more of a greeny teal. The two colours really work well with each other. Now, it's especially important when I'm using shimmers that I stretch the lid out because otherwise, what happens rather than the pigment being nicely blended across the lid, the way I've done it here, is that it um, it builds up in those deep creases but it builds up loosely rather than being nicely packed on and blended and then it ends up drying up and throughout the day as I move my eye it starts cascading down my face which not so good. 
again, just buff the edge there. Lovely. Right, while I clean this brush on the same worker pull cloth, uh, I am going to pause you while I go and pop some foundation and whatnot on. And then I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. For you, my darlings, there will be no delay. For me, however, I'm going to have to wait until I next press record to speak to you again. But I'll see you instantly. Okay, I am back. I kind of did my brows a little bit floofy. <laughs> Never mind. Hmm. Right, I'm going to grab the uh, Morphe M321 that I used for the shimmer and I'm just going to literally just put the very, very tips of it. Hopefully you can see that, how much I've actually got on the bristles themselves. I'm just going to pop that. Along the lower lash line, and kind of buff it with itself, like I did above. Obviously, be more careful here because I've now done my mascara, my foundation. I really don't want to fall out if I can help it. If I do get the fallout, I might just style it as teal freckles. Voila. Voici. Or something French. Right, I'm grabbing my Jeffrey Northern Lights palette and I'm going to go in with this Alaskan Ice which has actually got a greeny blue shift, I don't know if you can see that, hopefully you can. It was showing on my viewfinder so hopefully it will be actually picking up. This brush that I'm about to use is literally just an old lip brush that I bought from eBay years ago. But it's great for getting up under the tail of your brow. Like this. And then in the corner. And you know I like to bring mine down underneath and just blend it in with whatever colour I have run along my underline. Yeah. I've always suffered with very, very watery eyes. Um, since I've had fibro, that's a million times worse. I just I can't put things in my waterline. If, if I'm lucky, it will stay long enough me to get a couple of photos and then that's it my eyes are streaming so much there is nothing I can do to keep them on so if you do this if you have the same issue as me don't worry about putting anything on your actual waterline just smoke the lower lash line out like I've done it'll give you the same effect but hopefully without the watery eyes okay I am going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to bung some more of this highlight on my face. Put some mascara on, put some lippy on, do something with my hair. And I'll be back with my finished look. Again, for you my darlings. Instant. Hey, there you go. Finished look. Uh, I used my... 
uh, Revolution Blowout Cannabis Sativa Mascara. Another one of my Charlotte Tilbury lippies that my friend Hedda sent me. This is a Coachella Coral. I do like, if you're wearing a teal, a coral lip looks so good against it. It does make your teeth look like they need to be whitened, but it goes fantastically with a teal look. So, this is my basically two shade look from the Oh My Glitter Winter Wonderland palette that had so many of you wanting a tutorial. <clears throat> so, I hope this answered your question and uh, I hope that you feel brave enough to try recreating it because as you can tell it's one of the more simple ones that I've done um, but it does give you some practice with your blending. Now if you are one of my regular babies please double check you're still subscribed, YouTube are still culling people from our numbers like you would not believe. It's very disheartening when you're still a very small YouTuber. Small in terms of platform, not that size. Right, if you're new to my channel, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you enjoyed it here. Uh, if you've made it this far through, I'm guessing that there must be something that you've enjoyed. That being the case, it would be awesome if you too would like to join the nicest family on YouTube by hitting that subscribe button and turning it from red to grey. I've got an awful lot of films you can uh, watch through if you decide you want to see a bit more of my personality. Basically, pick a playlist, put your feet up, grab a snack, relax. However, warning, if you get too relaxed, you may fall asleep. Apparently my voice can do that to people, in a good Wait, not a boring you to sleep. Wait. Anyway, welcome to the family. Right, my darlings, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.